Hey, what's going on? So today's episode is brought to you by Extreme Media Group. If you need podcast studio rentals, you need photography, videography, or aerial drone footage, get a hold of them at Extreme Media Group. You will not be disappointed. As a matter of fact, this podcast is provided by Extreme Media Group. And the truck, go buy that truck. Go for it. Go buy. I believe you should. I believe you should drive a beautiful, brand spanking new. Maybe you're too old, right? A couple thousand miles on it, but like. As a work vehicle that's wrapped, that can one you can write off, it's gonna help and then you number make two, money. It's that's gonna, gonna freaking make you money. Yep. But like, if you're just doing it to show off or to be cool or be whatever, like, there's a time and a place to show off and be flashy, dude. The first five years of your of owning a business is not that time in any way, shape, or form. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of us as small business owners, we don't we think we have earned something because we worked hard when we. going on everybody so on today's show we have none other than jason von Payne with state 48 roofing how's it going bro what up dog <laughs> um man i'm glad to have you here I, you know you're doing some big things out there on, on in the instagram world and in the business world you know for that fact um so it's an honor to have you on the show absolutely you know um nice hat bro thank love you love it love it love thank it you, green. Thank you. i seen you driving down the road the other day um, yeah i flew, flew past you i forgot where we're at and I was like, oh, there he is. Because uh, you got that bright black and green truck. Yep. You know, I love that. It just stands out. You know, that's that's marketing at its finest. When you can stand out, you know, you, you just see it. No matter what, where it's at, you know, it stands out. Yeah, it's free advertising, man. You got to drive anyways, right? That's so. right. You know, that, that like... That bothers me when small businesses don't want to put their name on their on their on their vehicles. And I've heard this like I've been in business what 15 years now or something, and I've seen a lot of guys, and they're like, "Oh, what if I get in an accident? And I get sued." I'm like, "You're an idiot, bro. You're already gonna get the the, the insurance. It doesn't matter. Once they pull your insurance, they know your business. Yeah. You might as well pull up to your to your customer's place and let everyone else around you see who you are." You know what I mean? Well, it's a scarcity mindset too, right? It's yeah. like, I don't want them to know. It's like, no, I want them to know. Like I actually had one of our guys um, uh, got cut off on the freeway and he rear-ended somebody. It wasn't his fault. But I mean, the truck's a hot mess on the 202, just all over the place, but you can see it. I had 10 to 15 people within like two hours. Hey, are you okay? They thought it was me, right? Yeah. But I have 15 trucks. It was one of my sales guys, and he, like, literally 10 to 15 DMs, pictures, phone calls, are you okay, what do you need, what happened, how can we help, and it was just, it was an accident on the freeway, Yeah. but because they saw the rat, I saw it, yeah. right, and it flipped that scarcity mindset of, like, not, oh, are they going to know, like, me or this or that, like, you had an accident, they're going to pull it anyways, number one, number two, like, the mindset of, the, they're going to know, you want them to know. Yeah. Right. So when you pull up to the homeowner's house or you pull up to the building or to the school or to the HOA or to the neighborhood to go do whatever project you're doing, like you, it's omnipresence. You want to be everywhere. You want to yeah. see their stuff everywhere you go. I totally agree. Yeah. I, I was, um, you know, I see this a lot with the landscapers. You know, they're so afraid to do it. And it's like, just throw your name on your vehicles. You totally. Know? Work on it. Get a magnet. Start with the little magnet first. Work your way up to where they, all the vehicles kind of match. You right, know? right. And, you know, sticker them up, you know, however that looks. Um, so I'm a, I'm a big fan of that. I like what you're doing. So anyways, let's get right into it. Jason, I wanted, you know, everyone sees you today. You know, you're throwing events. You're doing coaching, consulting. You got a nice big roofing business. But, you know, take us back to when you were younger. You know, did you have a good childhood? You know, because... Being an entrepreneur, and, and like a lot of times, uh, well, for me anyways, mm-hmm. is a lot of us are screwed up somehow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and so I'm curious on, you know, your background story, uh, and we can bring it back up to date. So, wh- like, how was it like, you know, growing up? Where were so, you, where'd you grow up at as well? So I'm born, I'm actually a third generation Arizonan from Gilbert. Okay. So I'm a Gilbert boy. Re- through, went to Gilbert High, um, went to Chandler Gilbert only did like a semester or two and I was like, this is dumb. This is not for me. Um, but yeah, I, I, some people like, Oh man, like I grew up in a trailer and my, my dad wasn't there. I, I honestly, I had an amazing upbringing. I had an amazing childhood, 
mom and dad were in the were in there. Amazing mom. I played sports all through high school. She was at every freaking practice, every single game. Showed up for everything. My dad's a blue collar guy, right? Still owns a flooring company. I think this this year is his 40th anniversary, uh, doing flooring out of the Southeast Valley. And um, yeah, um, I'm one of five kids. Grew up like I said in Gilbert, not the Gilbert now, but the Gilbert from the 90s. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's all you know, dairy, uh, and, fields, it was, uh, yeah, it was open. alfalfa yeah. and dairies and and two open. lane. Two lane dirt roads. Uh, we lived on Lindsay Lindsay Road, which used to be literally a two. It was asphalt, but it was only two lanes, um, and dirt on the side. And then yeah, dairies and alfalfa fields and everything all over, coyotes and jackrabbits and whatnot. But um, yeah, so grew up there and learned. I I had a, a hay business when I was little. So my da- my uncle is, was the um, the Fort McDowell Indian Reservation. He was the like an agriculturalist over there, and so I bought the hay from him. So he deliver a squeeze of hay, which is like, I forgot how many um, bundles of of hay, and I would throw, I'd pull them off the big huge tower and throw them onto a flatbed trailer. My dad would drive me around, and I'd pick them up and go drop them off to you know two or six or eight or ten at a time for their people's horses and cows and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I did that during high school. I didn't, I didn't work during the summer or during the school year because I was playing sports. But in the summer, I was I owned a landscaping business. So I'd go cut grass. I was a full time lifeguard at the local pool at Gilbert uh, Gilbert Junior High Mesquite Junior High pools, and um, yeah, there was what was the third one. Yeah, so those are the main three jobs that I had. But I had three jobs in the summer from yeah. when I was like nine till you know I went on my mission. I'm LDS, served a mission for my church. Um, learned that's how I learned Spanish. So I went to Mexico City for mm. two years. It was that, that was uh, right after high school. Right after high school, yeah, yeah, yeah. Graduated and and went went and played baseball at EA and up in Thatcher uh, for a year, and then went on a mission for two years. Came back, was doing landscaping, uh, making twelve dollars an hour, twelve fifty an hour. And my uncle, who has a forty year old roofing company now, hit me up and said, "Hey, do you want to come? You know, my son's leaving. Do you want to come work for me?" And I was like, "Sure." Um, I was like, "I don't know anything about roofing," and he was like, "You don't need to." He's like, "You have great work ethic, a clean driver's license, and you speak Spanish." Those are my qualifications. That was my resume, right? Yeah. Because uh, I know, I mean, like I said, a couple semesters in school, but so I didn't have a degree. Uh, I'm 21, and uh, yeah, so was, he's like, "We'll pay you 14 bucks an hour." I'm like, "Done." And uh, when, what year was that? January of 2010. Okay. Okay. So if you, 15 years, that's about more or less when you started yours. Yeah. 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 09. I started 09. 09. Yeah. yeah. So January 2010 started uh, started working for my uncle. Uh, called pain roofing and I was there for about a decade uh, nine and a half years and yeah I went from making $14 an hour all the way up to the GM nice and uh, did production in the beginning so learned all the back end stuff with the crews and buying materials and the trailers and uh, all that stuff and then wanted to make more money and my uncle's like well you got it can't stop what you're doing now because I need you here but you can do sales part-time I'm like okay so I was doing that but then I get a rip for selling roofs and uh, started doing that I uh, did that for, you know, about three years and then uh, built out a sales team and did the whole entire thing. And then I wanted to buy in and uh, just couldn't come to a conclusion. Right. Couldn't. Uh, it's his baby. Yeah. It's his. Yep. It's his baby. And he said that and and uh, the numbers didn't work out for us. And so I said, hey, not a problem. Shook his hand and left. Went did outside sales for a year um, at another roofing company. One of my buddy, Russ Hyman, owns Griffin Roofing. Went did that for a year for him. And uh, killed it, did like 1.8 million in sales and um, while I was bootstrapping this. Yeah. And August of 2019, so actually this upcoming month will be five years. We had our five-year anniversary. Nice. Um, or July, technically, of 2019, we started. And so five years in business and got 91, 91 employees, 13 crews, seven sales reps, uh, awesome production team, admin team. Uh, we've vamped up our marketing the past couple of years, a bunch of studs there. And uh, yeah, we're just kicking butt and taking names. No, it's really good. And so in, in the roofing space, you're doing um, commercial and residential? Commercial, residential, mostly residential. Yeah, okay. Um, we'll, do, we'll do any size of commercial, mostly re-roofs or yeah. maintenance, like yeah. servicing, mm-hmm. like recoats and stuff like that. I just don't like the new build process for commercial because they, they're net 30 60 90 to pay and then all the trades f of the roofs <laughs> well, you got you got the warranty too it's a big old warranty yeah, b- big old warranties but like then you then you got to go fight like the stucco guy or the drywall guy or the 
the the pest controller, the solar. Uh, there's so many trades that get up on a roof when you build a home, especially a commercial building, and they destroy them. And I I got I got burned a couple times. I'm like, dude, I'm not freaking doing this anymore for new construction. Yeah. And so, but somebody like units are up on the roof. Everything's painted, stucco, like everything's good. This, the roof is bad. We'll come in and, and replace the roof, service the roof, maintain the roof, whatever. Re Refoam it, recode it. Refoam it, yeah. Coating, TPO. New, new flashing, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. yeah. That's what so. we did on this building. Um, so I see, like, just listening to your story is you got that entrepreneur mindset from your dad and your uncle. Mm -hmm. Like, you were born into it, which is really cool. But what's what's even cooler is you, you were able to utilize those experiences and bring that into your own world. Because a lot of people don't do that. Like... They're exposed to a lot of good things, you know, and, and people just don't take advantage of those opportunities to learn, right? Right. You right. know, you get all these opportunities to learn. You know, I've seen, um, I've seen like different instances of, of young adults, um, either they're, they're either try to take advantage of the opportunity by asking for money, mm. right? Yep. And, and, or they just don't take advantage of it all, at all and they don't do nothing with what they've been exposed to their whole life. You know what I mean? And, and it's super cool that you, were, you said your dad has been in business, your uncle has been in business. You were exposed to these things. You're like, okay, let me take all these tools. And now it's time, you know, 2019, it's time to go, you know, and you're right. killing the game, you know. So that's kudos to you because, dude, I'm telling you, have met a lot of people, you know, you know a lot of people that just don't, like, they have what it takes and they don't use it. Or it's, they don't use it. Well, I think it's multiple things. Okay. They don't, they don't use it. So they have the resources or the opportunity. Yeah. And they don't take it, that yeah. opportunity. Um, they have the opportunity. They just don't want it. That, that's that's true. That's true. And, and and to each their own, right? Like I want my, I, I have people that are like, so all my sales, my entire sales team is all straight commission, right? It's so like you, you, you kill a cricket, you eat a cricket. You kill a whale, you eat a whale, right? Yeah. And some people are like, dude, I want the guaranteed nine to five, every, you know, whether it's 50 grand a year or 150 grand a year salary, they want the the cushy this and that. And so the less risk, the less reward. Mm -hmm. And some people don't want to take that risk. They're like, Hey, I, I have sales reps. are like, dude, I like, Oh, I want to make a hundred to 200 grand working for you. I never want your job. I never want to start a business. Okay. Go sell. Let's, yeah, yeah. let's go. Sell. Right, cool. But, um, Andy for right. You know, Andy, yeah. he, uh, he talks about this, like, dude, somebody has to flip the burgers. It's not a bad thing. It's, it's, and to each their own and to, but I, I Sean Whalen taught me this, the word programming. Mm -hmm. We grow up with, you know, a mindset. Maybe it's a, 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 a bougie mindset. Like I always have to drive a brand new car. My parents always drove nice cars, new cars. So I have to drive nice cars and new cars. Well, that became because your parents have always done that. Yeah, right. You're used to it. Yeah. Well, my dad loves Dave Ramsey. Right. No debt and and you know debt that, and oh, he university. Oh, he loves Dave Ramsey. <laughs> my my dad's the dude. You know Costco, Costco jeans and New Balance shoes. You know no debt. Um and and I grew up that way and I had a a handful of experiences where I was like, but what if I could use that debt to leverage and to make more money? Absolutely. And to live the life that I want. And as, as I grew, I said, okay, well, there's things that my mom does really well that I want to continue with me. Her servant heart, um, same with my dad, very, very service oriented. We, I, I still take pride in this. Um, I can't put it on paper against other roofers, but I would say that we are the number one roofing contractor in the state that gives back to the community to, via, you know, giving full roofs, uh, fundraisers, golf tournaments, donations, that kind of stuff mm -hmm. um, that came from my parents. Yeah. And so some people will follow in their parents' footsteps. So they came from corporate America, nine to five after five o'clock. Like, why are you working? Like you work from nine to five. You don't work after five o'clock. Yeah. But in the blue collar space, bro, it's like feast or famine, man. <laughs> you know, Yeah. Saturdays, uh, weekends. It's, it's, it's totally true. It's, I remember um, when I was a kid, you know, I, I didn't grow up in church. I grew up kind of like a bad life, but uh, so my adopted dad, Paul, he was, he took care of me. And he was um, kind of like um, like that guy, like the negative guy. You know, you ever hear the story of Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Sure, sure. That's kind of how I ended up being. Was I had a, I ended up having two dads at one point. Mm. My real dad came into my life. He was a rich dad. And I grew up with the poor dad. Ah. And, the, and so how I grew up was exactly like, don't do anything extra. 
don't take the keys, don't do this, don't do that. But in my mind, I was different. Right. I was like, give me the keys. I want to be in charge. I'm gonna learn how to. I'm gonna learn how to do this. Right. You know what I mean? I want. I wanted more in life. You know. And so, but it is. You do need. Um, you do need those burger flippers. You know, it's kind of like you know with animals and insects, the the circle of life. Like you need all those elements of people to make mm-hmm. this world run, right? Right. And not everyone can handle it either. Not not everyone can handle the pressure you're handling, right? Or myself. You yep. know, they get headaches, they get tired, they're they're out. You know. I I was listening to or reading uh, a reel yesterday. I forgot who who it was. It's on my phone, but something along the lines of people. Um, maybe it was Cody Sanchez. I think it was. But when you truly oh, the chick, yeah, yeah, she's good. Yeah, she's dude. She's a, she's a baller. I've heard yeah, her speak a couple her. times. Yeah. yeah, I want her to come speak at my event. Um, anyways, she talks about how the the mental toughness of being a business owner. Some people would crumble with the amount of stress and the the resilience that you have to have as a small business owner. Nothing is in your favor. The government's not in your favor. Right, lending isn't in your favor. They see a small business owner. Yeah, we'll lend you a million dollars to start your business. No, they won't. It's imp- trying to get uh, vehicle loans in the you, beginning. You work your way up, uh, dude. Yeah, yeah dude, you ain't getting nothing in the beginning. Nothing. Yeah, there's no like. Yes, we love small business owners. We'd love to take care of you. Like I just got a loan a week ago in three days. Three days, a several a six figure loan. Yeah, for a, a project that I'm working on. Three days. Dude, I couldn't get approved for a freaking thirty thousand dollar truck when I first started. I had great credit, like, but you, but you don't have any proof. Yeah, yeah. You, 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 you just started, and ninety five percent of small businesses fail within the first three years, right? So, yeah. like, if you can pass, so I guess the 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 smart guys, the money guys, right? They're like, well, if you can pass three years and five years and get over a million dollars in revenue. You'll, you know, that's when like, okay, these guys, this guy, this guy's going somewhere. Let's, yeah, let's leverage with him. But the other 95%, they're like, yeah, you're going to take money for, and we're never going to pay us back. <laughs> well, so, it, and it's true, you know, because you haven't proven yourself, you know, how you, it's hard to trust someone. It's like, you just like, you give someone, you know, a hundred thousand bucks. That's only used to having a hundred. It's it, more more than likely they're gonna waste that money. Yeah, they're they're gonna blow it. It's not gonna be used. Uh, yeah, it's not gonna be used to to invest or to leverage or to grow or scale to, your business. To build the business. Yeah. It's for bougie stuff and dumb stuff that that it, where your ROI is zero. Yeah, depreciating 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 assets. Yeah, it, it's right. Like, so, I, know, I know a small contractor, and he's like, hey, I, they've been in business for a few years now. They finally got their first loan. It's hundred grand. Nice, something like that. And, and he's like, I'm going to go, this is the true story. I don't want to say his name because he's actually a friend of mine. Sure. But I had to, I like had to talk to him. He's like, I'm going to go buy me a new truck Ugh. and a trailer because I want to go camping. I'm like, dude, are you freaking serious? I go, so you're like a toy hauler. Yeah. Oh, I go, you're going to spend a hundred grand that you need to build your business. You're complaining about not having a superintendent when that money can fund a superintendent can, you know, can fund the next three projects. Yeah, I'm like payroll for several months. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah, and I'm like, but you. Uh, so, anyways, I I yelled at him like for about three weeks straight, and I'm like, do not freaking do this, bro. Use this money for your business. Yeah, you know, go make some money. Go get a, a million dollars in revenue, and if you got some profit, okay, then go buy you a new truck. Yeah, dude, I didn't buy. So um, I've been going to the dunes, the the sand dunes. Yeah, I've been going to the dunes since I was like five, uh, 15, 14, 15. So high school. Yeah, love it. People say, where do you want to go? You want to go to the beach? You want to go to the forest? I'm like, dudes, put me in the sand. Not the beach sand. I'll do the beach sand too, but put me in the put me in the dunes yeah. from October to freaking, you know, spring break. Um, I could go there every single weekend. And back in the day, then it, side-by-sides weren't a thing then. Ra- sand rails kind of were, but I grew up on quads. And uh, so me and my buddies would go all the time. Me and my brother and my dad would go a lot and got married, had kids. And especially when starting... State 48 roofing, I mean, will be five years. I didn't buy it till this past December. So four and a half years, I passed up on four and a half seat dune seasons of all my buddies with their toy haulers, with their side-by-sides, with their quads, with their dirt bikes, with their wife and their kids going, you know, Thanksgiving, every Thanksgiving, we eat turkey, then we leave that night or the next morning, we go Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Um, we'd even do it a couple times for Thanksgiving. We'd go there for that 
New Year's uh, is a Martin Luther King that's in January. Anyways, one of there's one there's a three day weekend in January that we go and so like mult like five six seven trips a year, and as I was growing and scaling this thing, like I wanted to so bad just to go into right now and back, dude, like throw down, let's go. Yeah. But I'm like, I haven't earned it. I think a lot of us as small business owners, we don't, we think we have earned something because we worked hard when we really haven't truly earned it. Mm -hmm. And then we try and we try and once again, buying a trailer, it's never going to make you more money and you're never going to sell it for more than you bought it for mm -hmm. except for COVID. <laughs> right. But like, and the truck, go buy that truck. Go for it. Go buy. I believe you should. I believe you should drive a beautiful, brand spanking new, maybe a year or two old, right? A couple thousand miles on it. But like, as a work vehicle that's wrapped, that can one you can ride off. It's gonna help and then you number make two, money. It's that's gonna money. freaking make you money. Yep. But like, if you're just doing it to show off or to be cool or be whatever, like, there's a time and a place to show off and be flashy, dude. The first five years of your of owning a business is not that time. In any way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. Especially if, and you can even talk about revenue. It's like, dude, I have a buddy. Uh, I just did an audit with a guy, some of my consulting business, Scale. Um, I just did one with the landscaper yesterday uh, that's in our program. And he was talking about doing all, he's like, oh, I'm going to, I want to scale it so I can sell it. And he hasn't even, he hasn't even hit a million dollars in revenue yet. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, who's going to buy your business? I was like, you're not doing, like, you haven't, and I think he's four years in. But I was like, you haven't proven to be consistent with your revenue, with what you're doing, to where anybody would want to acquire you to pay you a fat check. They'll pay you, but they're going to pay you bottom bottom dollar. They're going to pennies on the dollar, right? Yeah. Yep. To for that business, and I told him, I was like, dude, I was like, you got the wrong mindset. You need to grow and scale this sucker hard to where I said, has anybody called you to buy your business? No, not yet. I was like, well, and honestly, for the first four years, I didn't get those phone calls either. But the past six to twelve months. Emails, phone calls, text messages every freaking day mm. to buy my business. Because yeah. when you're when you're growing it, it's not worth anything because you don't have systems, you don't have processes, you're a high paid employee, you're not you're really you're a business owner because your name's in the LLC and you cut a check to a handful of guys, but you're really just a high paid employee. You just are. Yeah, you're always working for somebody. In the in the beginning, yeah. right? Yeah. And um, my buddy Tommy Mello, right? A1 Garage Doors. You got to get him on. He's yeah, he's, he's a stud. massive. He, you'll you'll I, love him. I message him. I'd like to have him on. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll talk to him. He's he's a super good guy. He's been to my events, been on my stages, uh, been on my podcast two or three times now. Um, I was actually just on his stage a month ago at one of his uh at one of his events. But he taught me something so freaking powerful that said if you can turn your phone off for thirty days. Like airplane mode, put it in the desk, put it in the drawer. Take your family to the Bahamas, Hawaii, San Diego. Take it to Flagstaff. I don't care. 30 days. Yeah. No laptops, no iPads, no phones for your business. What happens? Yeah, that's that's what makes or breaks. And and there, in my opinion, there's three different scenarios or outcomes. And he said, if it, he's like, some people, they would literally crumble. Like it, your revenue goes to zero and you're out of money. Mm-hmm. That's option number one, which is the worst case scenario. Option number two or scenario number two is you come back, everything's on fire, shit's hitting the fan. You're not bankrupt, but you're in deep shit. Yeah. Right? Scenario number three, it's steady. It didn't get better or worse. It just kind of stayed the same. Like month after month, cool. You left for a month, everything's okay. And then the fourth, which is the goal is we left we had a record selling month, we had a record sales this, we had a record this, or a continual progress in in all your categories and all your KPIs. Yeah. And it's like, that's the goal. And you can leave and your company is growing while you're gone, while you turn your phone off for 30 days. That is when you can say you are a business owner. Yeah. The other three, you're not. Because if you leave and your business crumbles, you, once again, you're just a high paid employee. Yeah. Yeah. Which is many, many entrepreneurs. How did you do that, by the way? How did you go from what you're doing now? I got your awesome building. I love your stuff, your podcast room, your, your, your office. When I was walking in here, everything you have very dialed in, very organized. Um, how did you go from, you know, starting 15 years ago from not this <laughs> to where you got now? What was the biggest aha moment where you're like, oh, this thing can, can and does run without me working in it. Now I just need to work on it. Yeah. I, and I still work in it, but, um, there's been like evolution of the business with, with myself and our business. You know, you have, I remember the moment and I've said this before is when I was young and 
and this is good for the young entrepreneurs is I went and got to get uh, commercial insurance for our company and the gentleman said, hey, listen, Chris, I'm not going to insure you, but I'll give you a piece of advice. You know, we're young. And he goes, do you want to uh, be a drywall installer or be in a business selling drywall projects? Mm. And so that was the first one. That was like my first year in business, uh-huh. right? That was like one aha moment, like quick. I was like, I was drew off the bags because I was, you know, I, I thought I had to get it going, you know? And sure. I was like, I'm just going to strictly manage. I'm better at it anyways. Right. You know, um, that was the, the first aha moment. But, you know, I, every, every, I constantly looked at uh, what others were doing, not in envy, but to say, okay, if they're doing it, I can do it. You know, it's kind of like the, the purpose of this podcast is if I can do it, so can they, right? Totally. So, and it's the same thing with business. I was like, okay, what, what is this guy doing that I'm not doing? What is, and then I started looking at other industries, you know, so like if we, when we leave, I'll show you like everything's barcoded. We have a barcode system that's everything's tracked in and out. I don't know if you guys have that, but full barcode system uh, with, um, with um, replenish numbers, max numbers, minimum numbers. And that's all stuff that I, I did a study on um, Toyota from Japan, mm. for, for lead systems, lean systems rather. Okay. So when I started implementing lean systems probably four years ago, and that's when we were able to really track what was actually happening. Um, we had less thievery. You know, um, because in construction, it's a lot of thievery stuff just disappears. Right. Sure. And so once we started with with um, with materials or tools, equipment, once it started being implemented and was uh, tied to someone's name. Mm -hmm. Right. That that like literally went to zero, like straight zero, bro. It's funny that you bring that up, because when you go from when, when it's your when it's the company stuff used abused treated broken, poorly everything true. broken disappears i went to home depot for five minutes came back out and it was gone oh god yeah i've heard those all like yeah. home depot or circle k yeah i'm like pick, pick one i was like man i was like i need to go set up a shop in in home depot parking lot like i could i get some good stuff from there <laughs> based <laughs> off how much stuff it gets lost there right but then when they have to pay for it and when it comes out of their paycheck yeah yeah. All of a sudden, that tile saw lasts three or four or five years, not six months. That pouch lasts That's exactly what lasts happens. several more years. Yeah. Right. Those those type of things. Uh, your truck. Funny how clean and nice your truck is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You didn't. But then, but if it's company one, it's garbage, not clean. You know, just all over the place because it's not theirs. They just, you know, drop it off, go to the thing. And it really is just a matter of what, holding people accountable. Yeah, accountability and, and ownership. So when everyone has ownership of their role, um, what, it, what they're doing, whether it's sales or, or installing, whatever, right? If they right. take ownership, if we can teach them to take ownership, they excel you know, in, in what they're doing, right? Another thing we, we started doing, and we're still getting better at this, um, is we started creating all the SOPs. I don't know if you have standard operating procedures, mm-hmm. but we created for every, everything. So if you were typing up a change order for us, or a proposal, or entering a check, a payroll check, a, um, accounts payable check, anything, we have SOPs for everything. Yeah, step by step, how to S- step here's by how step. To, here's how to cut a check from extreme drywall to uh, to a supplier. Pop, 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 yeah. pop. Here's how to write. Here's how to do a, a, a takeoff mm. on our software. Here's how to and so now huge. Yeah, so us, this is- the I definitely ne- have a long way to go on those. This well, is I'm getting the next, better, but This there's- is the next evolution. We're literally, I, I, we put, we're paid for a system, and my uh, my middle-aged daughter, Gigi, she's working on re- rewriting them all. So it's going to be it. all in a system, and then I'll, I'll have books. So we have it all, but now she's redoing it all, like, right. well, it's really nice. So the standard operating procedures, that's our next evolution, mm. because as we bring in someone, we can just plug and play. Right. Plug and play. Plug and play. It's- that's I, that's why I love. I tell people, my like, dude, go sit and just watch. Don't even eat there. Just go sit in a Chick Fil A. I love Chick-fil-A, and just watch. Bro. The food's good, but There's, just sit there and watch. Yeah, they're good. 15, 16, 17 year old kids. Kids. Eighty year old retired ladies. Yeah. Right. Go to so my favorite three that I go to because I, I I've even met people there and I'm like just watch. In and out. In and out. Mm. For gas stations, quick trip. Quick trip. They're working both, bro. Dude, quick both. trip. Quick trip versus a Circle K versus a I w- Chevron. I was versus thinking a Shell. of telling this guy 
we have the other booth, the oh. other uh, station. I was going to tell him, because he's like, oh, I'm got to upload this and upload that. I'm, I'm about to tell him, well, go run around to the other computer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Work two computers. Right. Who wants? So, but yeah, so Chick, Chick-fil-A, In-N-Out, QT. Um, QT. Those, those are my three go-tos. Yeah. When it's like, go watch them. And they're, uh, as much as I don't like McDonald's food, they have it so streamlined. Yeah. Robots are still not flipping burgers. It's still humans. Yeah. Right. Maybe one day it'll be robots. But as of right now, it doesn't matter if you're 15 and you're, you know, a freshman or sophomore in high school. It doesn't matter if you're 85 and you're on your deathbed, <laughs> right? Or you're, you're retired and bored. When you go in and work at McDonald's, it is so easy to where you don't have to have any experience. You don't have to have a degree. Oh, I've been doing drywall for 15 years. I'm doing roofing for three or four or five years. Okay, come work for me. Why? Because instead of saying, no, I'll take you from scratch and I will build you and show you and train you Mm -hmm. from scratch. Some people can't do that. That's why they have to bring in experienced stuff. But when you have your SOPs so granular and so elementary of like step by step by step, anyone that comes in, the question is when you bring somebody into a business, how quickly can you get them functioning to their full potential? Yeah. Right, you said plug and play. Was a plug and play? Is that like a two month plug and play? Is it a two week plug and play? Is it a two that, year that plug still and play? De- depends on the individual, you know, because of some individuals. Parcel, yeah, yeah. Parcel. Well, some some are some people are aggressive. They want to move fast. They want to learn fast. And some people are chill. Is what the word they would use. Yeah, uh, I call it lazy. Right. And they move slow. You know, at a slower pace. And and so in, like for like in our environment that we find that people, especially in my office, people that move at a slower pace don't really last it's really hard you know or they or like they get ignored like no one wants to help them or you know um i'm sure that because you want to keep moving like and then when you see someone else moving you know that's on your team you're like johnny's doing it and joe's doing it and maria's doing it why isn't jim you know it's like jim's standing out like a sore freaking thumb yep you know because jim don't want to do it you know um but yeah it's it's everything's about how can we uh integrate our systems you know, with the team, the team members, and if they fit that system, right? Right? Are they doing the right? So, dude, we're learning all kinds of things right now. It's 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 crazy for business. Love it. I, I want to eventually. I'm gonna do what you're doing. I'm just not ready yet. But um, so like we're learning systems how to how to grade our employees. We're learning um, you know uh, so we're we're changing everything for like um so like say uh framer one, framer two, framer three, and we're gonna grade them. They're going to be graded off of, uh, uh, so they'll have a, a say a, a minimum and a maximum pay pay rate for each one two three whether mm-hmm. it's a PM one two three so we'll be grading everybody we'll have the standard operating procedures have the the scan the scan stuff for all our tools so all these systems is what will separate us from the next guy right well then you get efficient and when you get efficient you can do more with right with less with less. At, and not at a cheaper price, but at a at a, a more affordable price because you're not wasting unnecessary money on resources. Yeah, which means you can drop your prices, um, or just make more profit. Plans that don't drop your prices, just make you just make more money because you're more efficient in what you do. All right, so, one of the biggest things that small business owners struggle with is hiring more employees. Mm-hmm. Biggest thing. How quickly did you hire employees to get this thing cranking and get this thing going? I immediately, dude. Um, you know, so I, I I came from the field. I didn't have the educate. I I have an eighth grade education. Oh no so, way. Yeah. Okay. So I I worked in the field. Um, didn't work in an office. So when we started, I had to learn how to use a computer. Um, uh, my wife was showing me in the middle of the night how to use a computer and stuff. But I knew like that I needed a team. <coughs> The teams have changed throughout the years, you know what I mean? But yeah. I, knew, uh, I knew that I had to bring in people, and I knew if, uh, after that first year especially, is if I went and got the work, I just had to go get the work. If I got the work, I'll find someone to do the damn job. Right, right. You know what I mean? And I always, I never, like, um, as I challenged myself, and our biggest year was $15 million. Um, Congrats. So, uh, but, uh, awesome. and, and, you know, you're in the same world, um, maybe a little bigger, but... Uh, as as I as I challenged myself and said, okay, I'll go get the work. As, as, when I knew I was going to get the work, I immediately was looking for the next employee. Mm. You know, and our doors are always open. 
You know, so I tell my our superintendents like, listen, they're like, well, you know, I'm gonna tell them we're not hiring. Well, first find out what they can do. You right. Know? You know, n- never say no to to a future employee unless you actually know what they can and can't do. You know, so like f- uh, that's the problem with people is uh, small companies is they'll say they'll hire five people and and they'll be like, oh well, we're not hiring no more. We have five people. Well, you're just missing out on the next best dude. Your yeah. next foreman, like you're stuck with these five people. You're complaining about them, but yeah. you, you won't hire a six just to see. Yeah. The sixth guy, he may not even work, but he may push the other five to do their best. Dude, yeah, that sixth guy might be your number one guy. That's and that, a lot of times that is. That that's why I always have. We're always hiring. Like, are you hiring? I'm like, I'm always hiring. I might not be hiring you, <laughs> but I'm always hiring yeah. because I've done that too. Where I have really had to be very specific. And be very intentional with the interview process. Yeah. Because I would, like I said, a lot of us, we just settle. And as a business owner, we don't want to add more to our plate than we already have. Mm -hmm. So to add more people and add more employees and have that hard conversation and hold that person accountable. But like that, that stud technician, that stud sales rep, that stud uh, or studette, right? The girl uh, admin, admin person walks by and that and that sales rep, for example, is a two million dollar a year producer, and you're settling for a dude that's doing six hundred thousand dollars a year. Yeah. Because you don't because you're not hiring. It's like if that guy walks by, you bring what if you had five of those? Boom. Like your your business has changed. Yeah. But we settle because we bring him in. We're like, oh well, that's just that's just how it is. Uh I forgot who said it. Um, one of the biggest like quotes that will just cripple a business, especially a small business, is this is how we've always done it. Oh, it's terrible. You yeah. ever say that? I'm like, if I ever hear that from my people, I'm like, dude, I'm like, get out. You're stuck in the mud. You're yeah. St- you're stuck in the mud. It, it becomes complacency. And like complacency is where you die. Totally. You know, it, it's, it's, you cannot become complacent in your business and in, in your life, in your marriage, whatever it is, right? Yeah. You have to keep challenging yourself. You got to keep learning. You got to keep growing. You got to keep moving. And in business, especially when you know, and you've seen it enough times is when, and, and this happened to me, you become complacent or you think you're somewhere and, and that complacency sets in because you're, you know, in your mind, you're a badass. That's when you've, that's made, when, you've made it. Yeah. That's, 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 and, and I, in my spiritual world, that's where they'll say the enemy comes in, right? That's when you open the, the floodgates, when all the bad shit starts happening because you think you've made it, you become complacent, you stop doing what you used to do that got you there, Right. Whether yep. whether you're in church praying or you're you know you're at the gym and that was part of what got you there and then you changed it up or you you were married and loved your wife and then all of a sudden you're cheating on her you yeah. know you stopped dating her you stopped taking what, care of her you stopped making her priority what whatever it is right yep. and yep. and so when when you start changing these things and then, or you become complacent you're changing the rhythm of what was happening you know what I mean and because like we're on a trajectory right we want to go up right. And think about it. We're we, we're in a rocket with jet fuel, and we start putting the wrong fuel in, shit's gonna start happening, right? Or we start changing the course. You, you've seen those things where you change the course barely, and it's like, you know, those oh, yeah. those images and stuff like that. And you change the course barely, like it'll set you off the wrong path. You know what I mean? And that's the last thing right. we want we want for someone to do. Well, and you also have to make sure that you are. Uh, we are always. I always believe we are always going off the path. The question is, how quickly can you realize that you're going off whatever path that is, right? Yeah, yeah. Finances, spirituality, marriage, relationships, uh, gym, right? Work ethic, whatever. And how quickly can you adjust and pivot and get back on track? Yeah. Right. Some people, they just take so long. They're like, yeah, I can come back. Or they're just like, it's too far. I don't want to come back. Or they came back and like, man, and they make this huge return. But it took them forever because they went so far off. Yeah that they they can't come back but the 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 comeback is just it's hard it's brutal it's time hard. it's and, it, and it's a, a marathon to do it but like we as business owners have to we we evolve naturally whether we think we do or think we don't we we always do yeah right from when you were doing you did 15 million you said or you've done 50 million before from zero in 2010 2009 mm-hmm. to 15 million like Chris, you've had to become a different version, a different business owner, almost like an onion, right? Like you're like a snake. You're shedding layers as you go. We as business owners, we think that we know that we see that, right? We reflect back, like, oh, the past five years. Imagine me, the the business owner I was in 2019 when I started versus now. Yeah, you sucked. 
Yeah, it was me, my wife, Dory, my CEO, who's now my COO, um, and a two-man crew in my in my garage, in my third car garage, mm-hmm. five years ago. To now, like I said, I got a freaking building a brand new yeah, office, five thousand square foot space. That's gonna be you know state of the art, you know all kinds of stuff, and. We as business owners have to understand that everyone around us, family, so you have yourself, your spouse, those around you, your kids, your family members, and your team members in your business Mm -hmm. have to evolve with you. Yeah. They have to continue to grow with you because you will outgrow them. You will. But if you're growing it's and you're inevitable. scaling, it's inevitable. you will outgrow them. And that's where that awkward, like I said, those guys, right? You have these five or six guys, but like, hey, why is this one dude like not? Like, he's not getting it. What happens? Those guys that continue to grow and scale with you yeah. as you grow and scale, you the other ones will, will hit. I just had one just a little bit ago. I had a sales manager. He quit, but, and three sales reps, poof, gone. Sales manager left. And they're like, yeah, we're going with him. Cool. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, not a problem. See ya. But like I, I did not compromise my standards, my values, and they're like, "Hey, this isn't for us," or "We don't want to. We don't want to change. We don't want to increase what we're doing, or your quotas or your expectations are unrealistic or whatever." And I'm like, "Okay, hey, not a problem. Shake my hand. See ya." Yeah. But you have to understand that you have to bring your team with you. Yeah. You have to bring your spouse with you. My my wife for the longest time was terrified. She's like, "You're not gonna leave me, are you?" Not like for another woman, but like. You and your business are going for like this work. with a rocket yeah, ship. For work. Yeah, yeah, for work. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Come with me. Hop on. And, she, and and we had to have some really hard, serious conversations. And now she's like, freak yeah, let's go. My kids, this is what we're doing. This is where we're going. This is how we're going to get there. You do that with your spouse and with your kids, right? Buying a house. We're going to pull right now, right? Uh, maybe getting a car, going on vacation. You tell your spouse and your kids, what you want to do this year, where you want to go, what trip do you want to go, where do you want to go to, to Italy or the Bahamas or Mexico or, or Sedona or Rocky Point or whatever, and you have those conversations with your kids and with your spouse. Are you selling your vision of where you want to go, how you're going to get there, and the role that your team members play in that vision? Mm-hmm. Do they know to where, no matter where they are, they know in a second, this is where we're going as a business, this is how we're going to get there, and this is how I'm going to play a role in us getting there. Yeah. One of the biggest mistakes, people that people don't sell that vision, and you wonder why they're stuck back there. They're like, dude, I'm terrified that as you go and do this, I'm going to get stuck back here. You have to continue to you know, baptize them and show them the way and show them the vision and what you're going to do, where you're going to go, how you're going to get there. Your, your, your marriage, your kids, are you married? I am. Kids? Yes. How many kids? We got four at home. Yeah, four at home. Yeah. How, what are the ages? Uh, 22, the oldest, and 15, the youngest. 22 to 15. Okay. Yeah. So I got 14 down to three. Okay. So I got a little little yeah. next little next phase, right? Next a little phase. younger 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 phase. But it doesn't matter. So with your team members, you might have seasoned. How, how What's the your most seasoned employee? How long have they been here? Like since eight months after we started uh, oh, so 14, yeah. 15 years yeah, yeah. So, i mean over a decade yeah, i have a few of them that are i have i probably have 20 to 30 people that have been here longer than 10 years that's amazing yeah yeah but like they have had to grow with you and with the business all of them all of them and the ones that didn't are not they're, there they're gone they're, they're, out, gone. they're gone it's so Love cool it. like what you're saying is one is about um the spouse like i tell a lot of entrepreneurs this <sighs> and i tell them get your get your wife involved uh-huh. The last thing you want to do is live a separate life than your spouse. Whether it's, uh, you know, if you're a man married to a, a woman or a woman married to a man, two genders. But, uh, um, True but story. no, so like mostly I'm talking to men when I'm saying this. So I'm like, sure, get your wife involved. If, and we'll go to, uh, like I'll go to um, a big, uh, men, uh, um, uh, Jesus, uh, like motivational events or coaching yeah. events, big events, yeah. right? Conferences. And yeah. conferences, all that stuff. Me and my, my wife, we go together to all these things, right? And and I'll see dudes there, and then, and I'll be like, there'll be like 500 dudes and like two women. You know, my wife's one of them or something like that. And I'm like, you guys are crazy. You're over here learning, leaving your wife to, like, you're outgrowing her. What happens when you fall? She's not going to be able to pick you up, bro. You know what I mean? And so my wife, we run a business together. We run our church together. We run everything together. And the kids all work in the, in the, in the company. Love it. So, you know, like integrate your kids into your business when you got a few going on, right? And and anyone out there, integrate them early because if you fall, 
you need them to help lift you up. You're a team, right? Like you said. And the same thing with our, like our team members, I call them team members. Sure. You know, I'll send them, I, like I started, I just got on Instagram probably like a year and a half ago. Mm. Um, and and I started, um, like I, I did it because I would text about 100, 150 people motivational quotes every day. I would make my own, you know, or snag the quote or make it or whatever, but make my yeah. image, all that stuff. Sure. And I'd text them every morning. <clears throat> And everyone would start like, you, you know, then you start like you're sowing seeds, you know, so if we can sow those, what you're talking about is sowing seeds into people, you know, so if we can sow those seeds into our team, it's like you watch the seeds grow and you watch that person grow and develop to, to become either, you know, a great man or a great woman, a great father, a great mother. You, you know, we've seen people buy new houses and buy their first car, get married, have kids, all these things. It's like, and we celebrate with them. Totally. You got to celebrate your team. You know, if you're if you have an employee that has a baby, freaking buy him one hundred and fifty dollars worth of stuff or two hundred, whatever it is. Yeah. But don't be a jerk and be like, don't buy him nothing. Like, send you know. Yeah. Get you, back to work. Yeah. You well, <laughs> you know, give them a few days off. Get them some stuff. Take care of their baby. You know, like you you want to take care of your team everywhere you can. Dude, just freaking give a crap. That's what that's what it boils down to is is to care, and you know, and that's you know, I'm so glad like. I gave myself to God. It was, it's probably been like 17 years now or something like that. And, um, because it get, it allowed me to, uh, to use my heart, right. To care, to give, I learned how to give. And now it's like, we're all about giving, bro. Like you said, love it. We're all like, we're going to do a backpack drive with our church. We bought everything, you know, we'll do the, all the toy drives and stuff. And, and I tell people like, just give as much as you can. Like you, like, and I don't want to get religious on you, but you can never outgive God. No. And, and so if people thought that way, they would quit being selfish. Think about how many people are selfish and don't even want to teach people to be better or teach them how to do a job at work because they're so selfish. Yeah. Law of reciprocity, man. So it's funny that you bring that up because I, I can't tell you how many opportunities have come because we have... Uh, cooked breakfast burritos, made hamburgers and hot dogs, um, done a water drive, done a blanket drive. Yeah, I'm going to your whatever. office for breakfast. Huh? I'm going to your office for breakfast. Oh, we'll do them. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, I'm actually going to have once a month, I'm going to do breakfast burritos and just have like a, a meetup because yeah. people do like happy hours and drinks and whatnot. I'm like, dude, why not like early in the morning for like an hour or two, get a breakfast burrito, come hang out, network, and do it in my office. Have a We're, good time. It's going down. So I, I guess with, with what you're saying, and, and the get and the giving part, right, is a lot of it just comes back to your mindset. Yeah. So I teach the three T's and they're kind of backwards because the T is at the end of all of them, not in the beginning. And it's mindset, implement, and consistent. So the T's are the, on, the, yeah. on the end of all three of them. And like you, a lot of people, you have to show, you have to show them plain and simple. As a, as a, as a business owner, as a leader, uh, as a leader of your family, right? You have to lead by example. Mm. They have to see you putting in the hours. They have to see you serving and giving back. They have to see you pulling out your your checkbook to buy that dinner, right, mm -hmm. or your credit card. And that has been one of the most rewarding things for me is that I just got a phone call literally yesterday. Funny you bring up the giving thing. One of my buddies, Brandon Lentner, hit me up, and he is mega, mega involved with Midwest Food Bank. Mm -hmm. And he's a GC, builds homes out in, like, Pegasus Air Park and uh, over in, in Queen Creek area. And I've known him for 30 years. And he, we did it last year and he hit me up and he said, Hey, he's like, I love your servant heart. I love what you do. Do you mind help us helping us out this, you know, this, uh, this giving season, you know, the quarter four. And I was like, dude, absolutely. And he told me what it was. I was like, Hey, I, like with where I'm at right now financially and in my business and my company, it, it doesn't matter how hard or easy it is to cut that check. Do it anyways. Do it anyways. You, you can. Listen, when you're giving, you're sowing seeds and it'll grow. It'll be fruitful. It'll come back. It'll multiply. Like, and I tell Tenfold. people like, and, and you know, if, if you're, if you have like, say a, a drug addict son, right. And he's say he's 18 or whatever, right. Go help another 18 year old. If you can't help your son, go help because that seed that you're sowing into that other kid, someone else is going to come help your son that like, we just got to keep doing good things. Right. It's just, you know, it, it's, it's the world calls it karma. You know, what goes around comes around. We call it sowing seeds. Right. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, everyone knows, like who knows us, they know we're big givers. You know, um, we help everyone who, who we can. Obviously, some people don't deserve it. 
Sure. You know, sometimes we helped them too. <laughs> we get jacked. You know what yep, I mean? Yep. And, it's uh, part of the game. Yeah, it's part of the game. It's kind of funny that you bring that up about social media and how you just started like 18 months ago doing it. I, I get mad at people that are not on social media. Oh, you got to be on. Take away the monetary part of it. God has given you a voice to use. I come back to the like getting religious, right? The parable of the talents, right? You have the one, the five. Oh, I love uh, that story. The, the one, the two, and the five, right? And five doubles, two doubles, one, one berries, right? And the the point of that being like people say, well, Jason, why do you do a podcast? Why'd you write a book? Why do you do these events? Those events cost. I mean, do I make money off of them? Sometimes I do. Sometimes I lose money on them. Sometimes I do them for free. Um, but the principle of it really comes down to. Can I bless the life of somebody else? Can I help another entrepreneur? Can I help another dad that's struggling? Can I help another husband? And like doing roofs is great. We've got sexy roof status, right? That we do great roofs, sexy roofs, that's awesome. But like there's nothing more rewarding or fulfilling than helping a a man or a woman become a better husband, a better father, or a better provider. Yeah. And it's so fulfilling for me. They're like, well, why do you do these events? Why do you coach? Why do you do that? You could just do your roofing company, put all the energy into there. Because if you take it away from there, you got to put some energy into your coaching. It, you have to pull some from your roofing. You just yeah. do it. Or yeah. whatever it is, right? And I was like, because I can make a huge, huge freaking difference by talking into this thing. It's true. And this thing is in where my phone is, right? By, by talking into that camera, yeah. you can bless the lives of other people in, in the masses, Right. Instead of just a one off conversation, what if I could tell this same story? That's why I love, uh, like I said, I, after this, not a problem. I'll come on the podcast. I want the raw video and so I can turn it into clips yeah. because then I can share this message with my audience, with my people, my yeah, followers. Totally, totally. Right. And that's really been huge for me is sharing that voice. We all have a voice. Don't think you're not good enough to share that voice. Now, you got to put your head down and actually. I love people that try and coach when I'm like, you don't even own a business. <laughs> or they try and coach something like... It's tough to be coached by someone that don't own a business, bro. Dude, I had a, I had a guy who was like, hey, can I write their sales reps and, and see what they need to work on? And I'm like, what do you do? And he's uh, he, he's a coach. I'm like, what do you... Like, what, what history or what experience? No real life experience. No real... Yeah, well, isn't, isn't that what coaching is anyways? It's like, you're relatable because you've been there and you've done that. That's... that's Yeah. Right? It's yeah. like, that's why people hit me up. Like... like my, my book is called Eight Phase to Eight Figures. Why? Because I have an eight-step process to get you to an eight-figure business in less than five years. Why? Because mm. I've done it. Past yeah. tense, me, not my dad, not my mom, not a friend, not like I work for one, like me, like with a team, obviously, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, but, like, but you've experienced it. Yeah, but like, and I can take those wins and those losses Yeah. and you turn those into coaching opportunities to help people that are on the come up. Hey, turn left here, turn right here, go straight here, slow down here. There's a pothole here. There's a bomb here, right? There's, there's infidelity or there's lack of loyalty or there's, you know, uh, uh, we just, we just redid all of our policies talking about you didn't redoing your SOPs. We just rolled out two days ago, all of our policies again, sexual harassment, auto, social media, uh, dress codes, all those things that five years ago you didn't need. And now I'm doing them. And so as people on the come, I'm like, hey, do you have a dress code policy? No. So watch out for this. You want to get a sexual harassment lawsuit? Where's your sexual harassment clause? Like, yeah. where, where are all those things, right? Driving. Well, I didn't know about this and texting and, and driving and and whatever and, and tying stuff down. I didn't know. And so they're all, it's like, no, no, no. You have to continue to implement those things as you go. Yeah. You got the, those those rules, those policies are they're part of the strategy, right? Right. You know, it's, um, it's so good what you're saying, man, because... The coaching, the teaching, the learning, that that's that's like it is our job to teach people what we're doing, right? It's our job. Like we we got we got there's something inside of us that someone else needs, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe not from me, maybe not from you, maybe they need it from someone else, right? But someone does. You know, you're inspiring people, I'm inspiring people, the next person's inspiring people. But like you said, if you keep it to yourself and you're like, Oh, I don't wanna be on social media and I don't oh, I don't wanna do this, and you got something to offer. That's selfish, bro. Very, I that's love that. like the Very person. Selfish. That's like the person that don't want to have kids. I, I'm sorry, but that's pretty selfish to me if you don't want to have kids, yeah. because you're only thinking of self, right? And so, if you got something to give, 
And especially if you got a cool story or something, like you came through something, what, or even if you're rich, it doesn't matter because you went through some stuff too, right? We've all, we all, um, I love people say, you know, pick your favorite. Everybody has their favorite sin, right? Yeah. yeah. And like, dude, like it, it's very simple. We all, everybody has a story, right? Some are more gory than others, like jail and murder and robbing and, and shooting and Sounds stuff like, like that. Mine. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, but and and so that's that's your. Thing. I have a buddy named Peter. You to bring Peter Meyerhoff on here too. His name's Chappie. Super good dude. Uh, he, he went to jail for like eight years. Like the whole, the, he has this whole thing. Me, I was a pretty little Mormon boy from Gilbert. Like I didn't have that crazy of a background. Yeah, grow, but, but you could, growing could've, up, you could have. Uh, one, I could have. You made good choices. Right, but I also, I yeah, but I also have. I learned along the way. I just made the right choice instead of the wrong choice. But I still had to make a choice. Yeah. Right. I still had to make a choice to leave landscaping to go to do roofing. I still had to make a choice to leave my uncle who was there for almost a decade, making six figures, working for him. I don't want to say a cushy life, but I was killing it. Right. I had to make that choice to go and take that leap. And I was terrified to leave, terrified to leave and go do outside sales because I, I didn't have any other. That was my real only real job. That, and like, that's your income. Job. You're already used to the income and to just shut that down to the unknown. Yes. Yeah, I had a base. I had a, I had overrides, and leaving like going straight commission. Like you control your destiny, but yeah, no, my pipeline's gone. I had to leave my pipeline, right? I had to leave, but but I'll leave you. I'll leave you with this, with the whole social media and all the cameras and everything. One of the biggest things that that helped me because some people when they leave and they start their own business, there's a huge dip, right? They're like going, 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 working for somebody. I'm gonna start my own business. They go here and then they go this way again. Yeah. I was blessed to never, I may have been stagnant this way, but I was this, and then I went this way, I never went down. And not the number one, my work ethic was my, by far my number one. Social media was probably the big, next biggest thing that kept me from like taking a huge hit financially to where I just kept cranking and cranking and cranking because I started Jason the Roofer. I had a true story, I had a conversation with my uncle and my cousin in two, yeah, 2010, 11, 12, somewhere around there. Uh, it was 2010 because I started it in 2010. And I said, hey, we need to do this thing called Instagram wasn't around yet or not a thing yet or, or as big as it is now, obviously. But we need this Facebook thing. We need this like this where you like hop on and take pictures and do that. This is 14 years ago, right? 15 years ago. And they're like, it's dumb, huge waste of money, huge waste of time. Like, we're not doing it. We're not going to put any money into it. If you want to do it, like, you can, you go, you, if you think it's good, you go do it. Yeah, yeah. And that day, Jason the Roofer was born. Yeah. So as I worked with them for nine and a half years, all my posts and all my stuff, I got to keep. So now on my social media, I have almost, I don't know, five, 6,000 posts. Yeah, all the content. 100% from my phone. Not yeah. from anybody else, from my phone. And I have like a, a marketing agency posting for me and all that kind of stuff. If it's from Jason the Roofer, it is they're literally my posts. And that was one of the biggest things because I because the credibility that I was able to establish yeah. on social media that costs you nothing, by the way. Like five, five minutes. I know how much all these cameras and, and this guy here in the back and all this. I know how much all this stuff costs. I ain't stupid. Right? I have one of those. But your iPhone? That you already pay a monthly. Yeah, you know, you're already you're, there. Free camera. Yeah. Well, they're dude, not free, but it's the, there. The apps really are good camera on the, the phone. The apps are free. Yeah. And like, dude, just pull out your phone and tell your story. Even if you're even if you don't use it to make money, use it to change to better the life and give the opportunity to change someone's life. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. might need to hear your story. Yeah. No, it's true. And if you are in business, use it to market yourself because no 100%. one's gonna know who you are unless you tell them who you are. Yeah. Nobody's gonna know. Nobody even cares. But once you start telling people who you are, what you're about, your lifestyle, people will start to care. They'll start to, you know, relate to you. They'll start to agree with you or disagree with you, right? Yeah. But how do you know unless you're not, you know, if you're not doing it, right? So put yourself out there. It's great. So Grant Cardone teaches this. I'm a huge fan of Grant. One of his biggest teachings is the number one reason why small businesses go out of business is because they don't know who you are. That's exactly right. Right. Uh, so the exact opposite of omnipresence, right? There's just, there's this shortage of, they, they, if they don't know you, they can't flow you. One of his favorite sayings, right? Yeah. They don't know who you are. They literally cannot transact with you. It doesn't matter how good looking you are. It doesn't matter how quickly you can throw up a sheet of drywall or put on a roof. It does not matter if they do not know who you are. They can literally not transact with you. Yeah, it's true. Right. 
And so just that's a big dude, just like get out there and just go after it and and stay consistent with it. People get on social media and they get a page and they do a handful of posts and do a live and then they don't do anything for a week or two or a month. It's like, would you do that in your marriage? Yeah. Take would a you break. do it? Yeah. Take you, a long break. You don't know, talk to your kids for two weeks? Yeah. <laughs> like, no. You talk to them every single day. Talk to your audience every single day. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. So as we wrap up, you give a lot of nuggets. Let's give one more last nugget to that young entrepreneur that's coming up, that's going through that little struggle. You know, what, what would you tell that, that person? Dude, I, I would tell you if you're looking at this, what I would tell you is do not take advice from somebody who is not where you want to be. Do not take advice from somebody who, where you want to go, they have never gone down that road. They have never been there before. Do not take advice from somebody that has not been where you want to go or that has not done what you want to do. Oh, it's so true. So true. So true. Yeah. Bad, bad data, bad advice. Yeah. Yeah. So You're listening to the wrong people. Guys, exactly what he said. Learn from someone who's done it. You know, don't make the same mistakes when someone's already made them. Learn from their mistakes, right? Totally. Don't reinvent the wheel. Learn from the expert. And if you need some coaching, consulting, or roofing, call Jason. Where do we find you at, bro? Dude, honestly, Instagram, at Jason the Roofer. Yeah, well, I know where to find you, but. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah at, at Jason the Roofer. Fastest way, I, I, answer, I respond to all my DMs. Nobody runs my, my social media except for me. And um, yeah, just I, I love helping blue collar small business owners. I coach them, but I help them, you know, just it, it's I, I love that industry. In my opinion, it is the most powerful industry in the country. Yeah. And a lot of they just need help. And there that's what is. we want to do. There it is. Let's help some people out. So thank you for watching. Be blessed.